Welcome grade tens, welcome to yet another wonderful, exciting life, subject, life sciences um, episode. Um, last week I hope you really enjoyed it and tuned in and this week we're going to continue with us looking at um, plant, the plant section. As I said to you last week, I know it's not always your most ideal section that you get so excited to learn, but there's such beautiful plants out there in our wonderful country, and it's so much nicer if we know just a little bit better about, more, or more about them. Okay, so today we're going to start looking at the anatomy of a dicotyledonous plant. What do I mean by that? If we look at the board last week, all right, you guys would have seen that we we looked at this concept called what is a monocotyledon and what is a dicotyledon. And if you followed last week, you would realize that I've used the same diagram again as I did last week. And what did I say a monocot and a dicotyledon was? I said that when we look at the seed, we inside the seed you can see we've got this like a little part to the seed. And if it's got one little part, one, Right, we call it a monocotyledonous plot. We can use monocot for short. Or if we open the seed and we see it's got two parts, can you see there two? We're going to say that it is a diacotyledonous plot. Now last week when we looked at the leaf, right, we saw that a diacotyledonous leaf has got slightly different structures than a monocotyledonous leaf. But this week what we're going to look at is we're going to look at a diacotyledonous root and we're going to look at a diacotyledonous stem. Okay, I'm not going to say diacotyledonous all the time because it just takes so long and it's just such a long word. I'm going to use the word diacot, right, which is, which is an um, abbreviation that you may also use. So when we look at the stems and the roots of a dicot, we can see that they've got certain um, particular shapes, particular characteristics, and we're going to look at those today. Okay, now the first thing I want you to do is to think of a root. We're going to start off with the root. Now I'm going to give you one minute. And all I want you to do in that one minute is you need to tell me what do you think the main functions of a root are. Okay, and then when you think of the main functions, what I need you to start thinking of that, every time you think of that, remember what we need to go back to, right? You need to go back to plant tissues. So I hope you've got your books in front of you with all the different plant tissues. Okay, you're ready to give me what are the main functions of a plant, one minute, and your time starts now. Okay guys, I hope you were able to think, all right, that's always a good place to start. When you think of the root, what is the main function that you wanted to do, okay? So when we think of a root, I always think of that, all right, and I think of the roots that are going down into the ground, and what do I need it to do? Okay, I needed to do two things. Number one, I wanted to anchor the plant, okay? And what do I mean by that? A root actually needs to, when we look at the root, it's not always made of just one single thing. We see there's a lot of little parts if I were to draw like that. And what, what is those, right? Those are going to be what we call lateral roots. And what are, they, what are they going to do? They're going to anchor the plant. Okay, second thing, right, that I need the plant to do is I need it to absorb water. Absorb water and mineral salts. 
Okay, so now why I gave you that one minute just to write those two things. I said to you, you need to start looking, right, at when we look at the anatomy, we are looking at what is inside. Now, when we looked at the leaf last week, right, we took all those different cells, all the different cells and the tissues that we looked at when we looked at calenchyma, parenchyma, xylem, phloem, epidermis, and we now need to pack them together and arrange them in such a way that the organ that we're looking at, the diacat root, can do its function. Okay, right, so what is the first thing we need to look at? We need to look at what actually does the root look like? Now again, you've just come from doing a little bit of work for me and I'm going to make you work again. The next diagram, which is an important diagram for you to learn, is what does a root look like on the outside? And remember, the word we use for outside is external. Right, so what is the root? If I'm looking at a dicot, remember we're looking at a dicot root. And a dicot root has got this characteristic what we call taproot system. One main root with many roots, right, leading from the side. There are one, two, three, four, five, six labels that I want you to label because you need to be able to look at the root and the root has got different regions. You need to be able to label them and what I've asked you to do briefly, I'm going to give you three minutes to do this in. What I want you to do is quickly write down or jot next to it what is the function right, of each of the different regions of the root. Okay, you've got three minutes because it's not always that easy. Remember, label, function, an annotated diagram. Your three minutes start now.
Okay, welcome back. That was quite a bit of a long break that I gave you to try and fill in all of those labels. But what I was trying to stress to you before I left, I wonder if you, you noted the word that I used. It was called an annotated diagram. And that's very often how you should be studying your life science. You should have a picture in front of you. You should have the labels of those pictures in one color and maybe all the different functions around in a different color. So when you see the picture, all these different terms and all these things right, need to start popping up and you need to remember that sheet of paper when you're studying and not all the different, different lots and lots of handwriting right, or the printed word in your textbook. Okay, so let's get back to your diagram. Okay, so we're looking at the external structure of the root and I have a diagram which I've pre-labeled here for you. And what I asked you to do was I asked you to write the function. Now, if we have a look at these, you will see we use the word region. And region just means an area, okay? We have a certain area of the root where it's going to have a particular function. Now, what are we looking at here? I'm going to start at the bottom. Now, we, I'm going to mention plant tissues that, um, that we have done, but we haven't seen them yet because we're concentrating on the external structure. Now, the root's function is to go down into the soil. Okay, so it goes into the soil. And a lot, maybe, the soil is actually rock. So we might find, if we're using brown here, you might find lots of rock and lots of stone in the soil. So what the plant actually needs is we call this a root cap. And what the root cap does, it's almost like a helmet, right, for that motorcyclist or bicycle, cyclist, anybody wears. When we put a helmet on, it's there to protect our brain. So imagine the root is going down into the soil, and as it goes down, it's all very rough with the sand and everything that's happening. So the root is responsible for the growth of my plant. So what I want to make sure is that I don't damage it. So what do I do with the root? I put a little root, right, a root cap on it. Then meristematic region. That should be, right, you should have little bells ringing for the meristematic region because those are the cells that can divide by mitosis. Okay, so now a root is going to go down and a stem is going to go up, which means that in this area, what are we going to do? That's the nursery of the cell. So we are going to make little cells here, all right, and what are we going to do to them? We are going to send them into another region. It's almost like you go to nursery school, then you go to primary school, then you go to high school, then you go to varsity. So you've got these different layers that you have to go to. Here, what do we have? The meristematic region is all the embryonic tissue. Can you remember that word? Embryonic tissue. That can become any other tissue and it divides by mitosis. So what do we want happening? As it divides by mitosis, more and more cells are made. And once a cell is made, what must a cell do? A cell must grow. Elongation means to grow, okay? So we are having the cells that instead of being looking like that when they were born, so to speak, when we were born, when they were developing, right, they now become nice and elongated. Elongated means to get tall. Okay, so in that region, what are we doing? My root is actually growing so that it can force down, but also that my plant can go upwards. Then we get to an area, the maturation. Maturation means that the cells, when I'm going to look inside the root here, I am going to see, right, you'll see, right, that there's a whole lot of root hairs, epidermal cells. And when I looked at the function, I'm going to go back here. When I looked at the function, what I asked you initially, what was one of the functions that you said? Most important, a plant needs to absorb water and mineral salts. So when we looked at a root hair, what was the function of the root hair? The root hair's function was obviously going to be my absorption of my water, right, and my mineral salts. What does my mature region mean? My mature region, right, is an area where I'm going to see different kinds of cells. Now, I'm going, that I'm going to keep now because we're going to show you a diagram. A lateral root are roots that grow out on the side. 
their function is going to be to anchor the plant. Okay, now what do I mean by a mature region? I'm going to give you a diagram and then I'm going to give you just one or two minutes right, to label it. And then we're going to have a bit of a break and then you can, well, we can have a bit of a break and you can label it during the break. And I want you, all right, to think about what you are going to see. Now, let me go back to this one. Let me go here. I said to you, in here, we see a mature region. A mature region means I am going to see the different kinds of plant tissues, okay, different kinds of plant tissues that I have studied and I've put them all in order. Okay, so now when I look at the inside of a dicot root, when I go now into that mature region, what am I going to see? Like we had in the leaf where we had the top and the bottom, right? We also had, right, what did we have there? The top, the bottom, the middle, and then the vein. So now, what I want you to do is, I want you to have a quick little look, because then we're going to go to a break. Straight off to the break, we're going to go into you being able, right, to label it. Now, I just want to do two things quickly before the break. If you have a look at this diagram over here, I want to show you. It might be very foreign to you. What is it that we're looking at? I have taken the root, okay? Now, look what I've done. I've cut it over here, a cross section, then I've tilted it and I'm looking at it as if I was a bird. Well, I've cut it across and I'm doing like an aerial view and I'm looking over it and I'm seeing what does it look like on the inside. Now this is called a line diagram. What does a line diagram mean? It says I'm not showing you the cells, but what I am showing you right, is going to be what area the cells are found in, okay? So what we're going to find is we're going to have on the outside, we've got an epidermis. Then we have this area on the inside that we call a cortex. We then have an endodermis. We then have a pericycle. And then we have this cambium. We have xylem and we have flow. On the outside, we are also going to see root hairs. Now, some of those terms might be foreign for you, but what they are are collective terms for different groups of cells. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick little break, right? and then when we come back, we're going to go straight into a section where you're going to need to have your textbooks open, and you guys are going to need to see if you can take the information from a line graph right, or from a line um, diagram and put them into different kinds of um, diagrams where you recognize the cell. Okay, have a quick little break and then we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back from your break. Hope you had a bit of a stretch of the legs and you're ready to carry on. Okay guys, the next diagram I'm going to show you is exactly the same as that, right? It's the same one Right, that I have shown you at the line diagram. So let's have a look what it looks like. All I've done is I've taken that line diagram and instead of using different, just straight lines to show the different areas, now you should be able to identify the different kinds of tissues. Okay, so what I want you to do now, and I'm going to give you two minutes, all I want you to do is to label this diagram, label this diagram, using this diagram as a key. So imagine I took this diagram and I cut it off like this, like a piece of pie, right? That is the picture that you are seeing. So for your two minutes, I want you to be able, I'm going to switch between the two diagrams. I'm going to give you two minutes. I want you to see, and also recognizing the shape of the tissues, can you label what this diagram, right, showing you the structure of the root looks like. You have got two minutes. Your time starts now.
How did it go? Was it, did you find it easy? Did you find it difficult? Right, maybe a little bit in between. Guys, remember what I said to you, have your, right, have your um, plant tissues next to you. And we can think about again what the functions of a root are. Okay, so my functions of the root is going to be to transport water. Okay, to transport water and to anchor the plant. And we're going to keep that, that little box on the side there. Okay, now if we look at it, the plant, I'm going to great label it and I hope your labels are the same as mine. On the outside, your very first layer over here should have been your epidermis. An epidermis is always on the outside and it always is on the outside because it's there to protect. Now your next layer, now look here. Your next layer, if I look at my cells and I go from here all the way to there, that is a layer. Now if you look at the cells, you see that they are similar. Now if I describe the characteristic of a cell, intercellular spaces, thin walled, right, um, looks like they might have a large vacuole, they take up space, they look like they're packaging, right, so what, what, what do I start to see, okay, it looks at, okay, it looks very much like parenchyma tissue, and then you would be right, it is parenchyma tissue, that whole section from here to there is, is made up of parenchyma tissue, but we call that area that's made up of parenchyma tissue because it's an area. Right? It's called the cortex. Now think about parenchyma tissue. It's thin-walled. It's got spaces in between. Why am I saying you must concentrate on those? Transport of water. What's the one thing we're missing on the diagram? The one thing we are missing right, is that some of these epidermal cells would probably have a root hair. And because they have a root hair, they're going to absorb the water and the water is then going to move all the way to the middle of the plant. Now, when I get here, right, when I get here, what you will notice, I'm going to use pink, there's another layer. There we go, oopsie. What you notice there's a layer that goes all the way around. It protects the central part. That is called, right, my endodermis. Endo means on the inside, right, and dermis, same as my epidermis. Dermis means a covering. So it means that it's a covering on the inside. Now this covering on the inside is actually quite special because what it does have, it has something called Casparian strips. What are Casparian strips? Casparian strips are special cells. They look like this. Okay, and what they've got on the outside, they've got a special wax that covers them. Okay, now you guys have done biochemistry. Wax is like a fat. And what happens when the water comes here and it gets a fat? It doesn't like it. It almost like it repels water. So what this layer does is, it says, okay, water, you've got your own path now. Now it's like a toll gate. You can't go over me because I've got all this fat layer here. You have to go through me, okay? So when the water keeps traveling, because that's the function of the root, through the plant and it gets to the inside layer, it says, sorry, dude, all right, no outside, you've got to go inside. So the water is forced to go inside right into the root and there in the middle right in the middle can you see nice big x right lovely big x as in x marks the spot this is where the water should be and also what else starts like with an x xylem okay so what it's doing it's forcing the water into the middle and when it goes into the middle look at all the tissue on the inside here okay all these lovely big hollow tissues vascular tissues because what is what are we transporting water and what does xylem do xylem transports the water and the mineral salts so the water is going to come into the root travel through these nice thin ward parenchyma controlled into the center of the root so it can go up the xylem now what else do we find with xylem? Because it's vascular tissue. 
we find right over here these little bumps over in here right and those are going to be phloem xylem and phloem are buddies for life right because what do we need we always need water to go up and we need food to come down so when water goes up and food goes down right we always need that vascular tissue together now what we're also going to find what we're also going to find in the root is two tissues that are meristematic okay now let me see if I can I'm going to see if I can be a little bit and I can uh, color okay now on the inside here on the in just underneath the epiderm the endodermis did you see we had a layer called the pericycle that does it's do it in black it's much better when we do it in black now the pericycle right the pericycle it divides and what it does is is that it gives rise to the lateral roots now lateral roots are the roots we saw and by root and we had these lateral roots on the side that is the pericycle the pericycle is going to give rise to lateral roots. Now on the inside, right, on the inside here, where we can, let's make another color, we can make an, like a red, we're going to find on the inside in here, surrounding the phloem, we are going to find a tissue called cambium. Now cambium, right, is meristematic. What does meristematic tissue do? meristematic tissue can divide all right and when it divides it can give rise to more tissue so in the case of the xylem and the phloem we're going to see what can happen is cambium can make more xylem and more phloem so what if I going back to my functions I need to transport water if I follow this water can move all the way through here until X marks the spot and what else do I need to make I need to make roots that's the job of my pericycle that can make roots on that that can anchor my plant on the outside okay All right now keeping that in mind keeping that in mind right, I'm going to give you one minute now I want to know what does a stem need to do right now a stem is above ground and when we think of the stem what do I want I want functions from you but what do I also want you to think of the different tissues okay you have one minute starting now Okay, so what does a stem need to do? So a root underground, absorb water, and keep the plant in the ground, anchor. Okay, what does a stem need to do? Okay, number one, I hope, I hope that she says it needs to strengthen or keep the plant upright. I hope somewhere you had, in some of your things you had, strengthen, to keep the plant upright what else do we need from a stem usually a stem has got leaves and the low the leaves are a different organ the leaves need to be held in position right in order for them to do their function so how does a leaf right hold its position and if you remember from last week a leaf 
right? When we drew the leaf, a leaf has got a little petiole. And that little petiole is attached to the stem. So the stem's responsibility, right, is to keep the leaves get their position. Now, right, the next thing I wanted you to, hopefully that you tried to think about was we said that water comes into the root. Now, if water comes into the root, doesn't it have to go somewhere? So if the water comes in, water must go up. Okay, so what is the stem also going to be responsible for? M making sure movement of water, that it goes up the stem. Because we're going to look, right, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to look at a process called transpiration, where we, the plant loses most of the water that it does absorb, but it's necessary for our water cycle and for our water balance. Okay, so a plant, though it absorbs water, it's also going to release a lot of water. Okay, so what we're going to look at, what does it need to do? It needs to be able to transport water. So these are the main functions that I need to, when, what I need to have if I'm looking at a stem. Now if I look at a stem, what am I looking at? I'm looking again, we always start external going on to internal. Now what does a stem need to have? A stem, when we look at it, as I said to you, it has a place over here where leaves are attached that's what, so the leaves to be able to, them to find their position, for them to photosynthesize. What we also find on a leaf is these different little sections. It's almost as if it's got little, like, like calibrated, it's got little measurements on it. And what are they? They are called nodes. That's where we find a little bit of a thickening. And the space in between is called, right, an internode. What the stem usually does, it's the responsibility of the stem to grow upwards. And at the top of the stem, we will usually point, here we go, look here, is the terminal bud. And the terminal bud, terminal means top, bud means, all right, a little new beginning that has the ability a bud can grow. So when we're looking at the leaf, what are we looking at? It grows, I'm sorry, the stem, when it grows upwards, there's this terminal point, end point, and that's the point that actually keeps on wanting to grow upwards. An axillary bud, that is where a leaf or a flower, axillary means almost to the side. Right, almost to the side. So terminal right at the top, and my axillary buds to the side. Okay, it's time for a quick break again. And then we're going to come back and we're going to see what does the stem look like on the inside. Okay, have a good break. Welcome back. I hope again you had a big stretch. Always get those muscles going and the blood flowing. Now I need to look at the screen. Okay, and then look and obviously listen. This is the line diagram of the internal structure of a stem. Now this particular stem is a dicotyledonous stem and as I said to you, when we look at the roots, there are slight variations but when it comes to the dicot stem, this is a huge big difference between the dicot and the monocot. Now when, I, when we look at the stem, as I said to you, what a line diagram does is to show you the different kinds of tissue. Now when we look at when we look at this at the at the stem, we need to look at tissues. I'm going to go back again. One of the words that we used, all right, so let's go back one more, we used strengthening. Did you notice we didn't use the word strengthening when we looked at the root? Because you know what? The root is underneath the ground. The root is got ground covering it, got soil. It, though it anchors the plant, it doesn't need to be strong, right, because it's, the, it's got all those little props that are going to make it up. When I spoke about the stem, I said the stem needs to be strong. So if you look at the line diagram, I'm hoping that there are certain words, right, that are going to jump out at you. Because what is their function? Here's kalenkama, their function is to strengthen. And he has sclerenchyma. Its function, again, is to strengthen. Why? Because both of those were tissues whose cell walls have been hardened, all right, with lignin. 
So let's have a look at the basic function. Our epidermis ever present on the outside. Then what do we have? Underneath it, just underneath the stem, I'm going to do it in pink here. What do we see? Oh, the pink is letting me down. There we go. Do you notice right underneath the epidermis, that is where I put my calenchyma. So I make my strengthening right underneath. But that's where I want it because I want to make my, my plant upright. Now most of this tissue, most of this tissue over here, and I'm going to find a nice color for it. Okay, I'm going to find a light blue over here. Do you notice most of the tissue here and all of here right, is space? Right, this is all space. What do I do with space? With space, I put nice packing tissues. Right, so when we come to that, what do we notice? Parenchyma. What is my, this over here is called a pith. A pith means a center, okay? A center. What's in the center? In the center, all right, and what is an array? Array means leading from the center. When we use the word path, we can also use the word medulla. Medulla means the center. So do you see all this white tissue? What do you see? Packing. Packing, packing, packing. Now remember, we said you when looked at tissues that parenchyma is the most abundant because that's what it does, right? It fills the spaces it packs. Now the next, the next thing that should be quite obvious to you are these little structures over here, right? They are my vascular bundles. Look, here's the name for them, a vascular bundle. Now in a dicotyledonous plant, they are arranged in a circle. And that is important because in a dicotyledonous plant, a dicotyledonous plant, have a look here, Going to go straight to that, that this diagram over here. Look at it. A dicotyledonous plant can grow wider. All right. So, how do we grow wider? We grow wider by adding more tissue. So, the more tissue we add, the wider the plant can become. We call that concept secondary thickening. And I'm going to come back to that just now. Secondary thickening only occurs in a diacotyledon stem, not in a monocotyledon. And that ring is a nice clue. What does a vascular bundle do? Remember, a vascular bundle is transport, right? It's transport. So it's going to transport the water up the stem. Look at one of our functions. And it's going to transport the food down the stem from our leaf. Now, in the middle, in the middle is this cambium. Now, cambium, we looked at it when we looked at the root. Cambium is meristematic. It can divide. Now, I've said to you, what do you mean by divide? Cambium can lay down every season. It lays down, what do we find in the middle? Xylem. What do we find on the outside? Phloem. Okay? Flow. There we go. The flow. So what, is, what does my cambium do? I'm going to show you this diagram over here. When I talk about secondary thickening, look at this diagram of the stem and look at the words. Primary xylem, primary flow. So here was xylem, here was flow. Now look at the words. Secondary, secondary, second year. So what do I do? Every year, right, the plant lays down new xylem and new phloem. And that, when we does it, that we see as a ring. Then the next year, new xylem, new phloem. Then we're going to see it, oopsie, the pink. Then we're going to see it as a ring. So when we look at a plant or a tree here and we count the rings, we can tell how old the plant is, right? Because each ring means one year of growth, okay? When we lay down more xylem and more flow. 
Okay, so here is your line diagram. Here is your line diagram. I'm now just going to give you, I'm only going to give you a quick minute. I'm now going to take that diagram and what do I do? All right, I change it and now instead of lines, I show you cells. All right, I show you cells. So now I want you to quickly, I'm just giving you one minute, to quickly label this diagram, right, showing the cellular detail of a diacotyledonous stem. One minute, it starts now. Okay, so were you able to label the diagram? As I said, this section can be quite tricky. All the cells do look quite similar. Let me quickly label it for you so that we can just look at one or two kind of questions that we are going to write that we can ask you in this section. What is the outer layer always called? My epidermis. All right, now look here guys, look at the nice thickening around there. Because what do we need the stem to do? We need support. So we've got a layer of calenchyma. Okay, then we've got this layer of parenchyma, which we call cortex. Let me spell that for you properly, sorry, cortex. And then we have the parenchyma here. That is my medullary ray. Okay, that will be my medulla. Then we go to our our vascular bundle. And well, if you have a look here, one of the things I said to you, right, this is sclerenchyma because it protects and strengthens the stem even further. These nice big ones are always characteristic of xylem. So if that is xylem, then I can make the assumption that that is going to be flow. And what do I find in the middle of my xylem and my flow? because I need to make more tissue, is going to be my cambium. Okay, now, if you look at the question, next question I'm going to ask you. Okay, let's get to the questions. Have a look here. What I've done now, I'm hoping that looking at the diagram, you can see that it is a diacotyledonous stem. Look here. When you look at the stems, guys, that is your giveaway. That vascular bundle that is in a ring shape. Now, instead of giving you a line diagram, here, what have I given? I've given you what it actually looks like under a microscope. Now, if I were to, if I looked here without looking at the questions, I can see they are asking me to label certain cells. Now, if I look at it, number one would always be easy because the one on the outside is always the epidermis. Okay? Number two, uh, three, four, five. Number six should also be easy for me because it's the thin cells and there's so many of them that is going to be my parenchyma. And it's, probably, it's in the center, it's going to be my medulla or my pith. Now, if I look at my vascular bundle, and I look at, look at, I see, look at these cells, they are so thick. And I know that's going to be my sclerenchyma cap. Now, four and five, the one I always get confused with. Which is xylem and which is phloem? The large holes, 
the ones that are much larger, they are going to be my xylem. And the smaller ones at the top over here are going to be my phloem. If I look at number two, I can see it's not a parenchyma and I know it's not an epidermis, but it also looks like it's got slight thickenings. And I know it's a stem because I don't find strengthening tissue in my roots and that's going to be my calenchyma. Okay, so what I've done is I've labeled, I've labeled my tissues. Now if I look at the questions, what do I want the questions? The first question says, list the numbers of the parts which strengthen right this stem. So they're not asking me to label it. They've said to me, some of these tissues can strengthen. Which ones are my strengthening tissues? And, guys, this is the most important part, sorry. This is the most important part. It says, list the numbers. They do not want you to give the name. They want the number. So let's look what strengthens. Anything that has a thickening. Anything that has a thickening. So, the most obvious one is number three. Number two we said was calenchyma and calenchyma strengthens. And it's always that third one that we forget about. And that third one is my xylem. Because although xylem is hollow, all right, is it also strengthened? So it's going to be number five. So when I look at, when I write my, when I write my answer, all right, what am I going to do? I'm going to write two, three, and five. And it looks like that we are up for time. All right, guys, the only way you're going to do this is to practice, 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 get a lot of test questions, look at study guides, make sure you understand your diagrams, right, so that you're able to identify is it a root, is it a stem, or is it a leaf. Until next time, cheerio, bye.